I'd like to make a public retraction and a heartfelt apology to all of my viewers uh, who watched my last video when I was talking about all the beautiful stuff that I received from Sterling, which I love. Christmas Eve. Oh, I'm not using this, but oh my gosh. I love this stuff. I'd like to publicly apologize um, because Sterling didn't send me that stuff. You know what? Friend of the channel, Dana, is up to his old tricks again. He sent me this whole package, and I couldn't tell because the people at Sterling had written a handwritten note, and when it said Dana, it said, you know, you know, Merry Christmas or whatever from Dana, I thought, oh, I didn't put them together. Oh, there's somebody named Dana who works at Sterling. Well, no, thank you, Dana, but no more. I told you, if you keep sending me cool free stuff, I'm going to have to give you such a pinch. No, I mean, I am... Who has, who, who has friends like these? With friends like these, I don't need to buy stuff. So thank you, Dana. And you know, Sterling's still fantastic. In fact, that's what we're gonna shave with today. We're gonna do a totally tubular 80s shave because I came of age in the 80s. And if you know me, and if you remember the 80s, this was huge back then. Dracar Noir Cologne by Guy La Roche. Ooh, Paris. This is the eau de toilette. So uh, this one I actually bought in 2004, and I still got a tiny bit left. I've been wearing this stuff since 1986. Not this bottle, but this stuff. I mean, gosh, that's an old bottle. Anyway, it's almost vintage. Do you, can you still buy this stuff? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, so Sterling has made their own version of Dracar Noir Reminiscent Scent, and they call it Sterling Noir. So what I have today, because Dana bought it for me and sent it to me, thank you, is the shaving soap, which I just showed you. It's in this little container here. I'm not gonna lather in there. Oh, look, it's got a, it's got a batch number on it. This is just a sample, by the way. Batch number 5206. It's kind of like a single malt whiskey. Ooh, oh, you gotta try the 5206. Oh, exquisite. The oak, fantastic. Anyway, <laughs> so they made this stuff. I've always loved Dracar Noir. I'm gonna shave with it, and I got this cute little tiny bottle of aftershave. So here's the two bottles. Thumbnail. All right. So we're going to shave with this. And uh, I don't have a purely 80s razor. So I'm going to use this 1956 Gillette Super Speed, which also lived through the 80s like I did. I came of age in the 80s, folks. I learned to shave in the 80s, and I'm still doing it. Yeah, oh, God, you'd think that after all this time, I wouldn't have to shave anymore. But I do. I like shaving. I'm glad y'all are here to watch. Kind of weird, right? Hey, let's watch this old guy shave. Oh yes, by the way, I was trying to find some more, I mean, the title is like 80s shave, but that's about it, just the scent, really. And I did find this shaving brush, which is like, reminds me of like old Lucite tables that were like in the late 70s, early 80s. Because when you look at like, that reminds me of the 80s, that thing. Because when you watch TV shows or movies, and they, you know, it's a period piece, maybe it's a TV show, and it's like, all right, it's 1983, let's put a bunch of Rubik's Cubes and, you know, neon posters, and everyone's wearing parachute pants and vans and stuff like that. Well, really, those early days, and, and for many households throughout the 80s, it still looked like the 70s, and in some cases, like Grandma's house, still was the, from the 60s, so the 80s didn't automatically just pop out and start happening. So, anyway... Enough talk, let's start shaving. So, this is a 1956 Red Super Speed Gillette. That means this is the most aggressive. Uh, and I'm gonna use an Astro Blade. Why? I don't know. Why not? Why not? And I just noticed this about these. And this is so you can keep track of how many shaves you've got. At least on these Astro Blades, there's a number one there, number two. Flip it over, there's a three and a four. So it's almost like you know, you keep track of how many you got. So I've already done two on this, so I think maybe one. I'm just going to stick it in there. I don't care. I don't flip it around. There's probably some physics thing that maybe the edge, like if you looked at it under a microscope, the, the edge of this blade would be all burred. And blah, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not microscopic. Am I? No. Okay. I took a shower. I did my hair. I did not have 80s hair like this. In fact, I'm going to try to find a picture of me in the 80s. And uh, so you can see what kind of hair I, I had back then. Here is a picture from prom. Yes, I got a date to prom. I can't believe it. Thank you, Margaret, wherever you are. Here's a picture of me at prom in 1988. Wow. 
Wasn't that something? That was a good angle. I was, I was overweight, I was chubby. And if you look like this and you, you know, like people take selfies like that, that's kind of, that was the early selfie angle because it made me look thinner than I was. So I always liked that photo. There are some much more awkward photos of me in the 80s, which I will not be showing you, like from middle school. Ooh, oh boy. The, the parted in the middle bowl cut thing I had, yikes. All right, let's take this Lucite 80s table. Uh, this is from Rezo Rock. Ooh, this stuff smells good. It smells enough like Dracar Noir. It's not like one of those cheap scents that you'll, you'll you know, you go to Walgreens or CVS or wherever you are, Jewel Osco, whatever, Tesco, and they'll have like a knockoff fragrance section. And they don't quite get it right, but this one is very much in the ballpark. But it's good on its own, even if you don't know what Dracar Noir smells like. What does Dr Dracar Noir smell like? I, I couldn't tell you. It just smells like Dracar Noir. <laughs> I'm sure the people smarter than me in the fragrance world have, uh, have uh, you know, called out all the scents and all the notes and all of this and that. But for me, it's just all together. That's all I want. All right. So I did not shave yesterday. I didn't even shower yesterday. Disgusting. Oh my gosh. But it's it's been kind of cold here. So I, I was just all bundled up all day. Took my walk. Had my Kevin McAllister knit cap on. Yes, I bought a, you know, in Home Alone, the original Home Alone, Kevin's wearing a uh, a wool knit cap with a pom-pom on top. It's kind of beige with red moose on it. There's several mooses. What's the plural of moose? Moose, right? Deer, deer. Anyway, so the lady that made that in the 80s still makes them. I'll put a link down below. You should go buy some because she hand makes them with virgin sheep's wool i think anyway it's real sheep's wool that is still being made at a uh, a wool processing plant like that's been open since the 1800s so the combination of kind of movie prop replica uh handmade here in the u.s up in maine patty lynn creations i believe is her name patty lynn creations so if you just do like patty lynn and home alone her uh, website should pop up she makes Home Alone 1 and Home Alone 2, because she made them for the movie. Did I not say that? She made them for the movie, and she still makes them with her own two hands. So if you want to get the closest one you can buy that's actually authentic and made out of real lamb's wool instead of, like, acrylic, because you can buy a million knockoffs on Amazon, you know, or lookalikes, but the actual woman that made it for the actual movie with the actual... You get the point. So we're shaving... With this 56 in 2022, almost 23, and we're talking about the 80s, kind of. Home Alone came out in, what, 1990, 89? I can't remember, dang it. Anyway, yes, so I grew up in Houston in the 1980s, and I had a great time. I loved it. I enjoyed the 80s. My parents were recently divorced, so the, the beginning was a little rough, you know, but you get you get past that. And then you got two Christmases, what? That was uh, how I looked at it. And then my dad moved up to Chicago for a few years, so we got to go and do all the Ferris Bueller stuff. I didn't lead a parade and sing Twist and Shout. I would sing lots of Twist and Shout later, but that was, you know, we got to go up in the Sears Tower, which is now called the, what's it called, the J.C. Penney Tower now? I can't remember what now. I don't know what it's called. But anyway, we got to do the things that he and his buddies did to a certain extent in Ferris Bueller. So that was great. So the beginning of the 80s, a little rough. A lot more for Mama Sinatra. But Papa, hey, that's life, you know. And then I was in, uh, let's see, I was 10 in 1980. So I, like, I really did come of age during that decade. I remember Ronald Reagan being president, and I remember watching Saturday Night Live, and I remember I did have some parachute pants. I had a pair of silvery gray parachute pants, and I think they were red checked slip-on vans. Now, the vans have been there since the 60s, but they had this huge resurgence in the 80s, and they're still popular to this day. You can still buy them. Now, parachute pants, I think, are a little harder to come by, but you can still buy those, too. I found some website a couple of years ago. That had like new old stock, you know, like Bugle Boy brand, you know, or Chess King in the mall. 
Chess King and the, the malls, the malls in general in the eighties, that was the place to go before Amazon and after the kind of mom and pop stores, it was the mall. The mall that we went to, we went to two of them in Houston on my part. My, I live in Southwest Houston, a place called Sharpstown. <clears throat> and, uh, we went to Sharpstown Mall. That was the big one. That was the fun one. And then Westwood Mall, which was, eh, it's not so good. But it had one of those corn dog places in it that was good. My friend and I would order corn dogs and cheese dogs on a stick. Very American. Anyway, and I love it. It's all right. I'm throwing away stuff as I do this. So we would hang out at the mall, and I remember at the top of the escalator, Sharpstown Mall is still there. I don't think it's called that anymore. And I think it's gotten a little rougher since I left. But I remember at the top of the escalators, and if my if any of my high school uh, chums are watching this, maybe you'll remember too. At the top of the escalators was a t-shirt shop called Street Smarts. Or Street Smart. Street Smarts. And that's where all the popular pretty girls worked. So I was not popular or pretty. I was just kind of like nondescript chubby guy with a bad haircut, just trying to get through life, you know, and having fun. I had some good friends. Shout out to Scott and James. We used to hang out by ourselves out on the, uh, on the front stoop of the portable buildings and avoid all the girls. Uh, but anyway, yeah, all the popular pretty girls hung out at Street Smart, or actually worked at Street Smart. So we would ride, being the nerds we were, we would ride up the escalators like three or four times in a row if one of the pretty girls that we liked happened to be working because the front counter faced the escalators. <laughs> Is that what you call creepers these days? No, it was just good fun. Good fun. We didn't do anything weird. And then just down there was a Spencer's Gifts, which are still around, but now they're kind of, I don't know. Well, it's not for not for my age range anymore, that's for sure. Seems to be more drug paraphernalia than anything, I don't know. But back then, oh, it's where every fun, cool, interesting toy was. Every, you know, everything. I would love to look at a uh, video of somebody ever walking through an old Spencer's in the 80s, because that place was awesome. Ah, memories of the mall. All right, that's the second pass. I'm just kind of burning through this Sterling Noir shave. Once again, it smells great. It's not overpowering. That's hugely important when you're using, especially a new scent, of course. To me, this isn't a new scent, so my senses are fairly attuned to it and used to it. But uh, yeah, it's good stuff. It's just enough. I'm going to have to... How long do you think it'll be before I have to buy a new bottle? Just barely hear it. I mean, there's something there. I barely use it these days. The only time I do is when I'm feeling extra plucky, you know? Maybe I'm maybe I'm going out with the wife. Maybe I'm going out with friends. Putting on some cool threads, you know, wearing my cowboy boots and one of my vintage jackets or something. I don't know. So when I'm feeling that way, that's when I'll spritz a little bit. And, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> whatever works, right? So this Astro Blade's all right, and this Super Speed is very good. It doesn't feel too aggressive. It's not adjustable, it's simple. There's a billion of these things out there, so. People keep asking me, where do you get your uh, vintage razors? I get a, you know, you get a lot off eBay, and if you've got an antique mall, mall or store near you, that's a little harder to come by. You'll find a bunch of kind of garbage razors. <laughs> and by garbage, I mean the old gem razors, ugh. I do not like those razors. I don't like the way they look. I don't like the way they shave. And the aesthetics for me is huge. Huge. Has to be an attractive razor. <laughs> I don't know. So if these, if these razors were working at Street Smart at the top of the escalator, I'd be driving by looking at them. These and the Fat Boy and the Rockwell and the whatever. All right. 80s music. So what was I into in the 80s music? I... Didn't get into like uh, progressive rock or alternative rock like, you know, the Smiths or the Cure. My wife was more into that kind of stuff and Depeche Mode, although I did like a lot of their music. I just listened to whatever was on the top 40 radio and I loved it. I wanted to be on the Q Zoo in the morning, 93 Q. 
Started off as 79Q. Did you guys ever hear Mr. Leonard, a character this guy did? I'm actually friends with him on Facebook, the guy that did this character, Mr. Leonard. It's exciting. Anyway, he would call in, and then he was on the Kuzu in the morning in Houston, or I guess he was there. Could have been, like, phoning it in, but I'm not sure. But I so desperately wanted to be on the radio and do that. It seemed like so much fun. I'm sure it wasn't as fun, but they got to do so much cool stuff. Anyway, I just loved all the top 40 pop stuff, you know, uh, Cindy Lauper and, uh, you know, Haircut 100 and Flock of Seagulls and ABC and you know, anything that was being played. You know, John Cougar Mellencamp when he was called Johnny Cougar. You remember that? Yeah. Started off being called Johnny Cougar. That's a pretty cool name. Jack and Diane. Oh, man. So much good music in the 80s. And the country music was good, too. That's more like what my parents listened to. But, uh, yeah, so that's what I liked in the 80s, those things. All right. What about the food in the 80s? I'm trying to think. I think honey mustard came out in the 80s. I feel, like, I feel like I'd never heard of it before the 80s. Actually, you know what? The one rest or the two restaurants that we used to love to go to were Chili's and Friday's. Not anymore. I still have a soft spot in my heart for those places. But they were the first restaurant that you went to that was, like, fun, like, they had stuff all over the walls and the ceiling, and uh, the, the food was great. But you know what? You know what the selling point was for Chili's back then in the 80s? Well, first of all, you would go in and you'd have to wait. There would be a wait, which I don't think happens today. But um, they gave you free refills on your fountain drink. So if you ordered a Coke and they brought it to you in a glass mug, like a beer mug, you know, you got free refills. And that had never happened before in any restaurant. It's commonplace now. Make your own drinks everywhere. Uh, but that was exciting for a, you know, 12-year-old kid. And it, it, my kids are the same way, man. They will choose, like I say, what do you guys want? What do you want to eat for lunch, like on a Saturday or Sunday? Let's go to this one sandwich place. And invariably, it's only because they have you know, fountain drinks that they can go up and make what they call a suicide. You know, where they pour all the different flavors together. I used to do that. Not anymore. Here's my advice if you're going to make one of those suicides. Don't put root beer or lemonade in it. Because the root beer will just make it all taste like root beer. And lemonade, yeah, It's not going to work with Dr. Pepper and Coke and Cherry Coke and Sprite and whatever. All right. Man. I feel like I just burned through this shade. Very good soap. Sterling does not make a bad soap. I've never come across one. It smells great. It is very reminiscent of this without being a total ripoff or like a fakey smell. It's good. And uh, now I'm going to put some of this cute little sample size Sterling Noir aftershave. Man, I do love that Christmas Eve, though. Thank you, Dana. And shout out to all the people at Sterling. Somebody commented, they said, uh, hey, I, I tried to contact Sterling to send out some, you know, sample to, to somebody. I don't remember who. And Sterling said, well, we don't really do that. So that was what first brought to my attention that maybe they hadn't sent it to me. And it wasn't. It was Dana. All right. Whew. Anyway, Sterling products. Very good. Try them out. Oh, interesting. So good. I, 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 you know, I really couldn't tell you what individual scents are in this. Could I have looked them up on their website? Probably. That would be too much like homework. And I don't want to do homework for these things. I mean, I do sometimes, of course. But sometimes I just want to shave and chat. So, shave and chat with Sinatra Lennon, your old pal. Oh, man, I feel worn out. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that was something else they did uh, to battle being worn out in the 80s. Did a lot of booger sugar. Not me, not me. But a lot of people did. A lot of nose whiskey. You ever heard of that? You know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm going to keep it coded because... This is kind of a family channel, kind of. I mean, I don't cuss or anything, so. I don't advocate or condone drug use, unless it's therapeutic in some way. And, yay, yeah, that's up to you to decide. All right, everybody, that's enough out of me. Thank you to Dana again. Thank you to the Sterling Soap Company just for existing and making fantastic stuff. The Margaritas in the Arctic, the Christmas Eve, the Sterling Noir, and they've got a whole line of everything else. And somebody said the coffee's great, too. So, me and a little, uh, I don't need to put any more of this on because I already smell beautifully of Dracar. But uh, 
he and I are going to go take a little walk and uh, get dressed and just going to put it right there. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me. And I'll see you all very soon. I just remembered this photo from sometime in the 80s with my little brother and my grandpa. Hey.